All right, so let's jump into this video and talk about our acceleration enrichment feature we're going to be working with in our Fuel Tech Manager software. We're going to find the acceleration enrichment is going to be needed to be able to add fuel on top of our main fuel table as we're having rapid throttle changes. We'll find the main fuel table is going to be characterizing the steady state throttle operation or the airflow as it's entering the engine. So at idle, we'll have a closed throttle. At part throttle, we'll be anywhere between maybe 10 to 20% throttle. And then wide open throttle will be all the way at 100% throttle. So we'll find our throttle angle isn't going to be moving. We'll have a pretty steady state amount of airflow or air mass that's coming into the motor and the main fuel table can properly characterize all this. We're going to get into a situation where we're having our throttle change. So if we're at 3000 RPM and 20% throttle and we hit the throttle very quickly and go up to 80% throttle, we'll have a momentary increase in the air mass or airflow coming into the engine. And we have to increase our injector pulse width to be able to get enough fuel in that situation. The main fuel table alone will not be able to provide enough fuel. So that's going to be the purpose of the acceleration enrichment. There's going to be a whole bunch of things to cover with the acceleration enrichment. So we're applying it correctly. There's going to be some things that fuel tech does a little bit differently than their standalones. So we're going to be covering all that in this video. Without further wait, let's jump in so they can check it out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to be taking a look at our acceleration enrichment in our fuel tech software. So the acceleration enrichment is going to allow us to add fuel above and beyond what we find here in our main fuel table. We'll find it's just going to be a compensation factor for fuel just as we found with our engine temperature or intake air temperature compensation or even something like our gear base compensation. It's going to be very specific and add fuel in a very specific way so that we can have proper drivability. Now without acceleration enrichment we'll find as we give it throttle input as we're driving around we're going to have lean tipping so we're going to have constant hesitation feeling as we start to move the throttle and that's going to cause poor drivability, which we want to avoid. So we're not going to have good throttle response. We're not going to have good drivability. Our main fuel table here can be thought of as our steady state operation for fuel delivery. That's going to mean as we're driving through the table here and having our fuel values deliver the air fuel that we want and moving our pulse width around, we're going to have relatively stable airflow coming into our engine. So whether we're going to be at idle with a closed throttle here, or we're going to be operating at part throttle here um, with a low throttle input anywhere between 10 to 20 percent throttle or we're at our wide open throttle areas here from let's just say negative uh, one psi and higher where we'll be at essentially 90 to 100 percent throttle so in this situation our airflow is going to be relatively consistent it's going to be moving around a bit but we're going to be able to compensate for that with the fuel delivery here in our table now, when we get into the situation where we're driving here, let's get back to part throttle between two and 3,000 RPM as we're driving. We're operating at something like 20% throttle to maintain a particular speed that we're driving. All of a sudden, we want to stomp the throttle to get into wide open throttle. So we're going to go here from our load being in the, let's just say, negative 8 PSI vacuum going all the way up here to 0 PSI. Let's say we're naturally aspirated. We're going to have a rapid move here in 